morning so it is saturday morning and i thought that this weekend i would film a little reading vlog uh we don't have too many plans this weekend uh james is currently out picking up some tables that we found on facebook marketplace and um this afternoon if the weather stays clear we're going to go and meet some friends for a socially distanced um visit outdoors but yeah that's pretty much it um However, before I jump into what I'm planning to read this weekend, which I'm sure you are keen to know, seeing as I've got my brew, I thought that it might be nice to just have a really brief catch up. Um, there are various different things that I um, feel like having a chat about, to be honest. Um, so firstly, you might be able to tell that I have had my hair cut, finally. Um, it's a little bit shorter than I would normally get it cut. Um, but honestly, the ends were just trash. They were like straw. Um, I have been dyeing my hair for a very long time and with hairdressers closing um, in the UK because of lockdown, it all just got a bit much. I had like various different colors coming throughout my hair. I feel like it looks a little bit more uniform now. Uh, I don't know how short it's gonna be when I wave it, which is something that I quite often like to do, but it feels a lot fresher. Um, I mean, my hair does not grow very quickly, so it will probably still be this short in six months time, but there you go. It needed to happen. My hair feels better for it. The end, full stop, the end. Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, so as I said, James is out getting some tables, um, one of which we're gonna use as a TV unit in this room because we are currently using the kids' bookcase, which is not ideal. Um, and in terms of this room, we have ground a little bit to a halt. Partly that is because of Loki's arrival. Um, if you don't know, Loki is a five month rescue that we got from Cyprus, that we adopted him from Cyprus. Um, we do have a vlog coming about our decision making to, you know, why we decided to do that um, and the adoption process, but I've fallen a little bit behind with my vlogs. I have so much footage that I need to edit and upload, including the video about Loki. Um, but just having Loki has been quite intense. Um, he was astray from the streets, so he's very food obsessed. Um, he eats absolutely anything, even things that he shouldn't eat. He'd never lived in a house before, he's not house trained. So there's just been a whole load of challenges that have come with his arrival, which have taken up quite a lot of my time. So hopefully he's a bit more settled now. We're going into week four um, of him being with us. So hopefully I'll be able to catch up on that, including uploading my video about just getting him, um, adopting him, bringing him home to be with us. So one of the reasons that we have ground to a halt, apart from the fact that this is Loki's base, um, is the fact that I don't like the colours that we have painted the walls. Um, it's Dulux Goose Down and we have it on the coving in the snug and I absolutely love it in that room. And we did paint a sample on the wall in here and I was like, it's a super soft grey, it's exactly what I want, let's just go for it. Um, but this is a north facing room, so it's quite cold. And I don't think I had appreciated how much the light fluctuates in this room throughout the day. So sometimes the colour is absolutely on point. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, and other times it just looks like this awful blue colour that was just not the aesthetic that I was hoping for at all. Um, so I want to change the colour um, and I don't know what I want to change it to. I've kind of got two polar opposite um, ideas and I'm not sure which one I want to go for. On the one hand, I feel like maybe just embracing the fact that it's a cold room and painting it a really dark grey colour, you know, on every single wall. Um, but polar opposite, I also feel like painting it a creamy stone colour um, and trying to make it kind of a cosy room. And I have seen um, Farrow and Ball do a paint called Wevel, which apparently is good for rooms with the light fluctuating and changing throughout the day. Um, obviously, for money reasons, we wouldn't get the Farrow and Ball one. We'd get um, like a Valspar mix or something. But yeah, I don't know. They're kind of two directly opposite um, views for this room. So yeah, we laid the floor, we put the skirts on, we painted it, James put the fireplace beam on and then I just said, I, don't, I just don't like the colour at all. Um, so yeah, we need to make a decision about what we're going to do with the paint on the walls, I think, before we progress much further. But as I said, it's not been a big disaster because this has been Loki's base and had we got this perfect finished lounge, 
I feel like I would have been more frustrated with him not being house trained whereas it doesn't really matter um, at this point um, and yeah that's kind of it I um, don't know what else I can tell you really we're just kind of chilling we're now into the summer holidays um, kids are enjoying not being in school as weird as it, be, as it has been obviously with me being a key worker Meg and Eli have still been in school so they are actually having a proper summer break which is nice and yeah that's pretty much it I think that's everything that I can think of to tell you now on to what I'm reading so this is also a little bit of a curveball because I started reading um, Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare and I am over a hundred pages in um, and I'm just not feeling it I really like Cassandra Clare's writing I get on with it really well but I'm just not feeling this book and so really unusually for me what I'm gonna do is put this to one side and uh, pick it up at a later point which I don't ever really do once I've started a book particularly once I've got a hundred pages into a book I persevere with it but I'm just not feeling it so I'm putting that to one side and I have instead picked up The Truth About the Harry Quiver Affair by Joel Dicker. I'm not too far into this, I'm about 50 pages in, uh, but I am enjoying it immensely and I'm really glad that I decided to put Clockwork Angel to one side and I will come back to it at some point, um, I'm sure I will. Um, but yeah, this is like a murder mystery um, about a disappearance that happened in the 70s and we have a present day timeline and then we have um, kind of looking back at the events of what happened. So we have a young guy who wrote this best-selling book um, and then he got writer's block but his college mentor was a man called Harry Quiver and it's just kind of emerged that maybe Harry was involved in the disappearance of a young girl in the 70s so not too far in uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I've heard very, very good things about it. It's translated from French um, and I have to admit that I can be, I can have a tendency to be overly critical of books when I know that they've been translated um, and I'm constantly examining them for whether we, whether we would say that in English. Uh, but I'm trying hard not to do that because I've heard really, really good things about it uh, and I've heard that it's just a really intriguing book massive but intriguing so yeah this is probably all i'm going to get read this weekend um but as always with my vlogs i will bring you along i hope that you enjoy it i will check in with you all in a little while i'm going to sit and do some reading now i'm actually going to go and see where loki is because he's being very quiet which probably means that he's eating something that he shouldn't be she's asleep he's not here so yeah uh, i will check in with you all in a little while this is my reading plans for this weekend i'll let you know how i get on and I'll speak to you all shortly. Thank you. Can I have that? Come on. Let's go play with this one. Ready? Go get it. Good morning. Oh, actually, I think we are just into the afternoon. So, good afternoon. It is Sunday. We've had a super, super slow start to our Sunday. We walked so far yesterday um it was a really nice walk i mean it was cloudy and overcast but it was warm the kids got to play in the river the dogs got to play in the river um and everyone had a really nice time with with our good friends um but we walked so far and we ended up having to carry loki at one point because it was just too far for his little legs um so we didn't actually get much reading done because we were out for a long time yesterday i did read um i had a bath and i read 
uh, just before I went to sleep. So I am now on page, let me find where I am, 120 and um, this book is weird. I don't know how I feel about it. As I said in a clip earlier, I think, um, I'm finding it very difficult not to be overly judgmental because it has been translated. And I do think that that shows in the way that the writing style is. It's not super fluid. But on top of that, we kind of have two main characters. We have our protagonist, Marcus, whose point of view we are predominantly reading from. And then we have Harry uh, Kubert, who is accused of murdering a young girl after some remains are found in his garden. And Marcus and Harry have clearly got a very... Um, what's the word complicated relationship so Harry kind of became Marcus's mentor when Marcus went to college but neither of them are particularly likeable characters uh, Marcus by his own admission is a little bit of a jerk um, in terms of he tells this story about when he was at school um, and he basically wanted to be admired and loved and be the best and so he would constantly pit himself against people that he knew he was better than so he could beat and that kind of continues into college when he boxes with his roommate because his roommate isn't very good at boxing and so he knows he's going to beat him and he just comes across as this a little bit arrogant he refers to himself as Marcus the Magnificent um, I just really really don't like it but on the flip side I don't like Harry either even though Harry totally calls Marcus out on his behaviour. Harry as a character, there's just something a little bit off about him and I don't know if we're supposed to think there's something off about him so that we think him, that's good isn't it, that's James cutting the lawn, so that we think he's more likely to have committed this crime, I don't know. But yeah, there's just something a little bit off about the two characters and I think that we're going to uncover more about their relationship with one another than perhaps first meets the eye. I mean I'm enjoying it, it's good, it's interesting, um, I like the kind of ominous undertone that we've got where we know we're building to some kind of reveal and we're going to find out what really happened to the young girl who went missing in 1975 but yeah mixed feelings so far obviously in a, a book that's over 600 pages I'm only 120 pages in that's not super far I'm gonna do a little bit of reading now we're having a roast dinner for lunch so I've put the chicken in uh, and we'll do some more cooking or James will probably pick up the cooking to be fair and I will read some more so I will check in with you all shortly So it's Monday. Uh, I failed yesterday at vlogging mostly because um, we just had quite a boring start to the day and then we went out for a walk in the afternoon and Loki got stung by a wasp so he spent hours and hours whimpering and crying and just uh, we had to spend a long time trying to get him settled and comfortable. Uh, so didn't actually do that much reading but I'm off work today because it's the summer holidays and I'm with the kids, they are occupying themselves. So I'm going to take the opportunity to do some reading. It's also a miserable, miserable day outside, absolutely hammering it down with rain continuously. So very unlikely that we're going to go anywhere or do anything. So perfect opportunity to do some reading. So I'm going to do some now, I'll check in with you in a bit. Let's do it. I've just reached page. 150 and honestly I have very confused feelings about this book as I mentioned earlier I have um don't, well I don't really like either of the two main characters Harry or Marcus um we're sort of delving back into the story of Harry and Nola and Harry's telling his story to Marcus um from prison um, so we're kind of uncovering the developing relationship between Harry and Nola and Harry is saying that he feels very conflicted about Nola but I just don't know. I don't know if he's going to turn out to be an unreliable narrator because obviously he has been arrested for his involvement with Nola so it would make sense that he wouldn't necessarily be 100% truthful with what has happened um, even to Marcus who is his old friend because uh, I definitely get vibes that there's something off in their relationship that's going to be uncovered as well. Uh, I'm going to read probably another 10 or 20 pages. I'll update you. I saw this thing actually on Books with Lala. Or is it Books and Lala? I'm terrible with channel names. I'll, uh, I'll leave it here where she did 
um, a feelings update or she gave a word every 10 pages and I really like that because it kind of pushes you to read a little bit more so in 10 or 20 more pages I will probably press I will probably press pause on reading so I'll do another update and just give you a short uh, update on how I'm feeling so that'll be 160 or 170 which will be good progress for a morning of reading so yeah gonna jump back in now just reached page 162 and Harry has literally just said to Marcus um, only write fiction anything else will just bring you trouble which is definitely making me think that perhaps uh, Harry is going to turn out to be an unreliable narrator and the story that he is telling Marcus may not be the whole truth. Page 177. I have no idea what's going on. I'm feeling tension and I'm feeling a sense of something ominous building but no theories, no idea. I mean I've still got a massive chunk of book left to read um, just kind of piecing we're beginning to piece together uh, the story of Harry and the story of Nola there's definitely more than meets the eye and I think that this book is probably filled with unreliable narrators because everybody has some sort of high stakes so Marcus is gathering evidence about what happened between Harry and Nola because he has um, faltered as a writer so he writes his book it's a bestseller and then he gets writer's block so he has an investment in this story because this could be the book that saves his career. Harry obviously has the stakes of if he is found to have been involved in the disappearance of Nola and the murder of Nola that he will go to prison um, and we're finding out that various people who lived in Somerset, which is this small town in New Hampshire where Harry and Nola were and where Nola went missing, they all had some kind of involvement. So we have the owner of the diner, Jenny, who was a young girl when Harry, uh, in the, well, she was a young girl in the 1970s and she was infatuated with Harry and she thought that Harry was infatuated with her, but actually he was obviously uh, obsessed with Nola. Um, and the policeman who is helping Marcus because Marcus has been receiving threatening letters since he moved to Somerset the policeman is actually married to Jenny so there are all these like different threads um, and everyone kind of has some kind of involvement and some kind of connection um, and some of our main characters obviously have high stakes in the outcome uh, of the investigation into what actually happened to Nola so yeah, not enough for me to be able to make an educated guess, other than I definitely think that there's some unreliable narration going on, and maybe we're, we're not getting everybody's true stories, and that that might eventually clear up a little bit. Um, what time are we on? It's just after 11, so probably, and maybe I'll read another 25 pages and get to page 200. That would be a good place to stop, then I will be a third of the way through the book, so... I might do that and then stop for lunch um, and spend some time with the kids. Curveball, page 185. That's all I have to say. Major, major curveball. Ugh. The dog has just licked the book and now it's wet. So I'm up to page 203. It's half past 11, so I'm going to stop reading now. I have actually turned down the page in my books, even though I don't normally do that. Um, I couldn't be bothered to go and find a bookmark. So yeah, not much to add from my last little update. The plot just thickens and thickens. Um, very much getting the, the idea or the impression that Nola was a troubled teenager and she was looking for a way out of her life, which was very sad and not at all what it appeared on the surface. And Harry, everyone thought that Harry was this um, incredible famous writer from New York um, and that's actually not the case but that is how he allowed himself to be viewed and so I can really easily see how Nola might attach herself to Harry because he was her way out um, and how she might have misinterpreted those feelings for feelings of love um, and so that's kind of what I'm feeling at the moment that's the way the story is going to go but yeah I'm gonna press pause now um, do something else check on the kids have some lunch and um, yeah, I'm sure that I will update you all shortly. Have 
to apologise for the state of my hair. It's really stormy today in the UK and I got drenched walking the dogs this morning. So I'm working from home today, it's Tuesday. I thought that I would do a couple more updates before I round this vlog up. So I am now on page 293 of Harry Cuber. So I'm very close to being halfway through this book, which I don't think is a bad goal to say that I've just done a few days of reading and to say that I wasn't really sure about the book when I started. Um, definite sense of tension, there's definitely something building. I think that a few of my suspicions are going to be proved correct or proven correct. Um, but yeah, I'm working from home today. The kids are in a holiday club at school, fully socially distanced, obviously. So I'm gonna have some lunch and do some reading now. Um, definitely think that you can tell that the book has been translated. Um, oh, there's a fly landing in the dog's dinner there. Uh, definitely think you can tell that it has been translated. It does read a little bit more formally, I guess, than we would talk. There's not much slang or um, colloquialisms in it, but now that I'm into the flow of it, um, I'm enjoying it and I'm excited to see where it's all gonna go. So yeah, I will check in with you all, hopefully. So a couple of things, first of all it is such a hot day, I am melting, everybody is too hot and bothered and it's very stressful <laughs> trying to do anything in the heat. Um, you will have seen that the last clip cut off um, and that is the last clip that I have of the vlog. I have no idea what happened to the rest of my footage not a clue. It's not on any of my memory cards, it's not on my phone, it's not on the Mac. I don't know what happened to it or where it went. So I am sorry to end this vlog on a little bit of a flop. However, um, I did finish Harry Quiver not long after um, finishing the reading vlog and I would highly recommend it. I was very, very close with one of my theories not very, not like super close but close enough um i really loved the mystery element i didn't seem to get over the fact that it was uh translated but that is more me than the book i would still highly recommend giving it a go it was a lot of fun uh to come up with all the different theories um but yeah that's kind of it i'm really sorry that i lost all my footage i'm sure one day i will randomly come across it i probably saved it in a very special place um that at the time made a lot of sense to me but now I have forgotten so uh, because it's so hot I'm going to keep this short and sweet um, I hope that you're all having wonderful days give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you soon and uh, I'm going to go melt in a puddle somewhere because lord it's hot